Hey guys, I was just out here doing some frost seeding and picking up a trail camera. I left here since early January. I haven't been able to get back in here for all the snow and ice. And uh, I guess when I first pulled up, I kicked out about seven deer, big doe group, just went up the hill. So they, they were bedded right along the edge of the thick stuff. But anyway, uh, frost seeding season is upon us. I just got back from Florida. I was thinking about retiring and moving down there, but I realized very quickly that I can't afford it, number one. Number two, I don't want to. I miss the mountains. Couldn't wait to get back here. I don't care how cold it is. I, I love the mountains. I like getting out in the woods and helping out deer, helping out landowners. So what I'm going to talk about a little bit today um, is summer seed purchases that you might want to make. I'm going to go back to the office, stay tuned, and I'll talk about some of the plants that I recommend for spring planting. And if there's anything interesting on here, stick around to the end and I'll put some video clips from my camera. Um, if it's boring, I won't, but if, if it's interesting, I'll put them on. All right, see you in a minute. All right, back in the office, I just wanted to go over some of these seed varieties that you might think about in the summer, in the warm season. I'm not real crazy about planting spring food plots because they don't do too, too well, frankly. And uh, what I like to do is plant my food plots in the fall, plant something that will get me through to spring, and then take off in the spring when deer need it. Um, deer nutrition needs are extremely high, especially does in the early spring when they're about to give birth because the, going off on a tangent here, but the, the fetus in a doe will kind of sit there and not grow very much through the winter during scarcity and then they grow like mad in the early spring and then as soon as she starts lactating, drops that fawn, then uh, she needs a ton of protein. But I, I usually get that from my uh, clover plots and my winter grains, okay? Because they'll take you all the way into the heat of the summer. And then you can drill through that and put your fall stuff in and beef that up and keep... The, the important thing is to keep living roots in the ground at all times. I'm going to say it again. Keep living roots in the ground all the time. And we, what we want to do also is to build up our soil in such a way that we don't have to put inputs in anymore. Um, properties that I've been working on for many years, we don't have to lime, we don't have to fertilize, mow, or do anything because the soil got straightened out. You know, we had to do inputs at first, do some spraying at first, put a lot of seed down, a lot of stuff failed, some succeeded, and we've got it to the point now where I can no-till, and I can broadcast and I can lightly disc or whatever it is I want to do and I don't need fertilizer anymore and I don't need lime anymore because the soil um, biota beneath the surface takes care of all that. The only way you can achieve that is to feed those little critters, all that mycorrhizal fungi, rhizobia, zotobacter bacteria, and the way to feed those guys is to have lots of roots, different sized roots. So we want to have grasses, legumes, forbs, and brassicas all in the same mixture. Um, now, you might say, well, Steve, uh, you know, I saw this other guy on YouTube. He said, you never mix your brassicas with anything else. Or... You know, we, we plant uh, buckwheat in the summer only, straight buckwheat. If you want to do that, that's fine. But I can tell you that brassicas are probably not the best food plot plant out there. It's sort of a candy crop in the fall, and, and that's cool. But um, I don't plant pure brassicas because they don't feed mycorrhizal fungi. They, they do... Uh, my nutrients though, so I like them in a mix. They also don't grow well in the summer by themselves. 
don't even try it because it's it's not going to work well for you. Uh, the leaves become very unpalatable, they attract insects, and they don't do well. However, in a mix, they grow just fine because inside that mix is, is a different microclimate. They get a little shade, they get help from the other plants, and they do quite well. So, uh, some of the grasses that we can look at are millet, which deer won't, won't eat until it makes a seed head and they'll eat it in the fall. If you're leaving your summer food plot on and you're not drilling through it or, or terminating it in the fall. Corn is good except I don't like to plant corn because it takes up a lot of space, it takes a lot of inputs, it's tough to get growing. What I find uh, on most small landowners is that they plant corn and even if they have a pretty good sized field, the deer destroy it, they eat it all before hunting season even comes around. But what you can do is use corn as your trellis to get your peas up. Now you could do, spring. one thing I don't have here is spring peas, but cow peas will climb up your corn. They grow really well together. That way you're putting nitrogen into the soil with your cow peas and you're growing corn for the fall the cow peas will spiral right up that corn and won't hurt it a bit you'll still get great great ears of corn and deer can feed on that all summer spring oats uh, oats are one of the best nutritive value grasses okay or, or of any forage really oats are fantastic feed for deer um, high nutritive value. Good, getting over into our legume group. Now what you want to do is try and get at least one out of each group. Better if you have two, okay? So legumes, we have forage soybeans, cow peas, sun hemp. Um, I don't have much luck with sun hemp unless I'm uh, at least zone seven or above. If you, if you, as you go south, they do much, much better. They need hot weather, long growing season. They do really well and, and, uh, in hot weather. And they fix more nitrogen than just about anything. Cow peas too. Cow peas are fantastic because they're kind of like a forage soybean in that they will um, nodulate really well. And, and as the deer eat the leaves, they re-sprout new leaves all the time and get you all the way through the summer feed deer all summer. For soybeans uh, in a small plot will get demolished. So unless you have some space like 10 acres or you, if you want to uh, put an electric fence around your food plots till they get up and healthy uh, and you can even strip graze like they do with cattle you know allowing deer to graze on something for a while then cut them off, let them graze on another part of the field, and keep them moving so that they don't destroy the plants. Okay? Because these are really delicious plants and they will get hammered by deer. Soybeans in a, in a one acre food plot, just forget it. Don't even bother wasting your money. Unless you're going to e-fence it. Even if you e-fence it, I've had them you know, some, some deer are always going to get in, so. Now over on the Forb side, we have, um, and brassicas. Oh. Usually I plant them in the fall, but I do want to put chicory here. And I'm going to frost seed that. I want that in the ground with my clovers. Uh, clovers again, planting them in the fall, and then overseed with chicory if you have your broadleaf weeds under control. Okay. Collards do really well in a mix in the summer, no problem. They'll grow all the way through the fall. Deer can eat the leaves and they'll grow back. Hybrid rape turnip is also an excellent summer brassica. I've had really good luck with it. Uh, the brand names are Paja and T-Raptor. I've been using T-Raptor for 20 years and I love it. Deer love it. Buckwheat 
could be in your mix doesn't do really well in Pennsylvania in a mix but it's there okay the nice thing about buckwheat it'll mine phosphorus for you all these plants will will go down into the subsoil and mine certain nutrients and share them with each other and then when this stuff all frosts out all those nutrients will be a slow release fertilizer for the following year or the following crop which could be your you know hopefully you could be drilling your fall food plot right through this sunflower is, is also a great trellis type plant and uh, looks great great for pollinators so there you have it if you take uh, a mix now what you do is when you're doing your mixes your basic mix is going to be whatever the the full rate of that plant is divided by however many plants you're putting in and uh, and then you can adjust it from there experiment with that and adjust okay you got your uh, your uh, alien down here alien life form that my grandson drew and uh, he's ready to chomp down on some of these delicious food plots and that's about it hey if you want to uh, have me come out and look at your property and do a plan for you do some forestry work give me a call um, we'll get into that season where this is when I like to do my my plans for people I like to do them when the snow is just melted which it's it, there's still snow on the ground around here right now but there's bare spots and I can still see all the sign from last fall which is the important sign and I don't like to take more than three guys per week so that I can give a really good service I like to spend plenty of time with each customer make sure they get a good plan that suits their goals and what they can afford to spend on their property so give me a call and, and uh, there's still some spaces left for this spring so uh, once the the uh, food plot season starts and I get some of these logging jobs going when it dries out I won't have time so call me soon and uh, hope to hear from you okay so on the camera uh, I didn't really get any pictures until we had that February thaw here in Pennsylvania we usually get a February thaw and exposes some green and you can see in this picture that there's eight deer there's this is no doubt the same crew that I kicked up when I pulled up on the site um, as soon as that snow melted off that food plot they're all over it and that's only a third of an acre and there's eight deer so that's 24 deer to the acre feeding on your clover plot a lot of pressure so that tells me I need more space I need to expand that food plot or add to it or or make some more food plots um, there are more food plots on that property but um, they're not doing so good either so that's why I have this fencing set up as you can see there's there's fence posts and there's a ground rod for an electric fence and once it gets to a little bit later in the spring this will come up and they'll mow it right back down to the dirt so then what we do is we uh, fence them out for a while and let that recover and let them back on so I did not get any bucks on my pictures I originally set this up to uh, check my sex ratio so it kinda looks like my sex ratio is eight to zero there is one button buck in that group uh, but I don't count uh, buck fawns as uh, uh, you know in my in my buck count so there was a coyote just one coyote um, when coyotes are around it kind of eliminates the deer off the the area they usually just work around the coyotes and uh, looks like they're back checking out this food plot and lots of does so hopefully they'll all have a fawn and uh, 
you know, start building this population back up. The population's pretty low right now, and bucks are scarce. So this, the bucks are probably in bachelor groups living somewhere else because the camera was there for a long time. I didn't get one buck. So uh, it's a little disappointing. You hope to see a nice big bruiser buck moving through, but it's just not happening. All right, nothing real exciting on, on the camera, so I just wanted to show that to you. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button and click on the bell so you'll be notified when there's a new video. And comment down below, let me know if there's anything you'd like to know more about.